Well, good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you may be joining us from tonight. We're thrilled to have you join us for this time. We call Midweek Manna, a chance to pause in the middle of the week and reflect on God's Word together. And we hope and trust your week is going well to this point. Well, here is the week and day we are recording this. We have just witnessed this past weekend, of course, very tragic situation in Pennsylvania the attempted assassination of former President Trump and sadly the, the bullet ended up killing uh, a husband, a father, by all accounts was protecting his family, a man of faith and hearts are saddened for him and his family as they go through their loss for sure and do not want to take that light, their loss and those thoughts lightly. We are though all thankful of course no matter how you view any politician that we're thankful that seeing former President Trump survive, we're thankful for that. I think all people are. I'm thankful to hear everybody saying that. And as always, when these kind of situations happen, the, the nice thing about it from the perspective of us as a country is that we hear people respond, usually most people, not all, but most people respond in a way as they should of obviously lifting prayers to whoever was involved, but also making a call for having more unity. And we've all heard that in the last few days. It was similar to those of us that lived through and experienced 9-11, what we heard after 9-11. And other moments like this in our, in our lifetimes, we've heard similar language. And of course, the cynic in me, as I'm sure the cynic in you is, that it's great to hear, but how long is it really going to last? And, That'll be interesting to see, even though I think, at least in the political world, there's probably more unity than what we actually realize. But bottom line is we, we appreciate and hear those calls for it. But as Christians, that a call for unity obviously is something that from scripture perspective we have as God's people that we're called on all the time for. That we're always called on for Unity, And as I was hearing about all this this weekend, it reminded me of that, about how many times in Scripture we see or read something about being unified and, and making sure that we remain united. And I think in Paul's letters in particular, we read through the light because as Paul was trying to do, he was trying to take those who came from a Jewish background and those who came from a Gentile background, and as they... People from both sides became Christians, unified them into one body, and the obvious obvious challenges they were to that. I don't think we can appreciate fully, really, the challenges they had to deal with about having groups from different cultures and different backgrounds and, quite frankly, different religions that are trying to come together as one. And so Paul writes a lot about that. And there are several places we can go to, but in Ephesians chapter 4 in particular, after Paul has got through talking about the theology of how we are all one in Christ Jesus, no matter if we do come from a Gentile or Jewish background, and obviously we're all one because of God's grace and through our faith in Christ Jesus, Jesus, as Paul talks about in Ephesians 2. But in chapter 4, as Paul is making that transition to the practical side of or what does this mean? He says this, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And he goes on, of course, talks about what we know as the seven ones that he mentions that do unite us all. But Paul, I think, understanding the challenges that lie ahead, and quite frankly, probably haven't already seen some of those challenges and experienced some of those challenges himself, I think he gives us and shares with us here four characteristics that will have to be present to allow unity to take place. And I think that's true, obviously, within the church and the church family. It's even true in society and jobs. And no matter where your job may be, you hear a lot of people uh, in jobs, different places, whether it's athletic teams or 
workplaces or obviously in politics talk about unity. There are four characteristics, I think, that really allow that unity to take place. And this should be a reminder for us even as Christians and in church, but even practicing that as we try to give the example of Jesus from no matter where we may be. And there's lots of ways we can break it, break it down, but just four words tonight to share with you. First one is humility. It says, with all humility. For true unity to take place, it does take humility. We have to be willing to humble ourselves. And Paul talks in Philippians chapter 2, that familiar passage about, ultimately really about unity, as he's trying to call on the church of Philippi and particularly a couple ladies there and others just to get along. He, he says in chapter 2, don't consider or consider, I should say, consider others better than yourselves. So be humble and take follow the example of Jesus as he humbled himself when he came to earth. For true unity to have to take, to take place, we do have to be humble. We have to treat others better than ourselves. We have to be humble in how we approach situations. Another key word here, at least in the English Standard Version, was gentleness. We have to be gentle in how we talk to others. We have to be gentle in how we treat others. And we need to make sure that we approach things with gentleness. We can't be on the attack. It's one of the things I think we've all been thankful to hear about the last couple of days is people say we need to cool down our language, cool down our words, and we hope that does take place. And part of that is in, in being more gentle. You can stand up for what you believe in, but do so in a gentle way and present things in a gentle way. And then with patience. we got to be patient with one another. It takes patience. Unity does take patience. And we need to be sure we are patient. And then the fourth key word here in this passage is love. Paul says, bearing with one another in love. Paul writes in Colossians that that love is what binds everything together. Love is what brings everything in complete unity. It takes love for others. And for us as God's people, which is what I really want us to think about and focus on because we are citizens of the kingdom of God first and foremost. And we should be shining the light of how people from all different backgrounds and all different places can come together in a unified way. We should be the example of how that is done for those around us and those in our culture and those in our world. And if we are going to have unity, we do have to make sure we exhibit love for one another. And love obviously encompasses things like humility, gentleness, patience. Love also encompasses, uh, encompasses forgiveness as well. And that's what it's take for us to make sure we are unified. Because they're as, as Christians, we're unified not really because of who I am or who others are. We're unified because of who Jesus is, what Jesus did for us. And so we follow his example uh, of how he came to earth in a humble way, how he showed gentleness, how he showed patience with a lot of people, but especially the apostles and disciples, and how he treated, treated everybody with love. And we need to make sure we follow that pattern because I do believe you can't read through the scripture without understanding that God wants his people to be united that unity is important to him in fact the last thing that Jesus prayed for at least as far as what we have recorded with his words in, in the gospel of John in John 17 the famous prayer that he gives there what truly is the Lord's prayer his main theme there was unity he knew how hard it was going to be for his apostles and disciples and the generations to come. And we need to make sure in our generation, we continue to strive for unity. We are unified and we exhibit and show what true unity is about. No matter, and no matter what the differences may be, no matter what the different opinions may be, we can see, still be unified as one because our faith, is found in Jesus Christ and what he did for us. Well, just some thoughts for us tonight here in the middle of the week. And again, we thank you for taking a few moments to pause and reflect on God's word together and to remind ourselves of this very important topic that is found throughout 
scripture. It's always good to be together. For those in our church family, we're thankful to have this avenue that we are able to be together and good to have you with us tonight. If perhaps you're watching this video and not familiar with our College Hill church family, and maybe you're watching one of our videos for the very first time, or maybe you've watched a couple before, but you have not really connected with us. We have not had a chance to connect with you. We would love that opportunity to do so, and you can certainly email us. You can send us a message on Facebook or Instagram or follow us in those ways, Another way, a number of ways to connect with us. We'd love to hear from you and share with you more about our church family here at College Dale. And of course, for everybody, we remind and encourage you to join us for our time together this Sunday. We assemble for Bible classes at 9 a.m., classes for all ages. And then we will assemble at 10 a.m. for worship here in our auditorium. Love to have you join us in person, of course, but if you are unable to be with us in person, we will be live streaming our worship through our College Dell YouTube channel at 10 a.m. Again, thank you for taking a few moments to be with us tonight. We hope you have a blessed rest of the week. And let's close our thoughts tonight in prayer. Father, we do thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for the gift of your son. We, we thank you for the forgiveness we have through him and the, knowing that he is the one that does unite all people together. You help us to, as Christians, lift him up, as Christians to practice that unity with one another, and as Christians to display and shine the light on how to live as unified people. Father, we are mindful tonight of those going through hard times. We're mindful of those in our church family going through hard times that are going through treatments, recovering from surgeries, or some dealing with loss of loved ones. We lift all of them to you, ask you to wrap your arms around them. Father, we were reminded this past weekend that we as a nation is a nation that needs healing, a nation that needs to Follow the example of your son Jesus and how he treated other people. Help us as Christians to be, give that example in doing so. But we pray for the family of the one who was killed this past weekend. We do pray for President, former President Trump as he recovers. But we pray um, that our country will be able to be more unified and treat others the way we should treat other people. And so we can and help us as Christians to be the example of that. And, shine the light of doing that so that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven father we pray for the situations that continue to go to go on overseas we pray for those that are continuing to deal with after effects of flooding and the storms and the wildfires in our country we lift all those situations to you and father as always we pray for the leaders of our community and our state and our nation and our world their hearts and minds be open to be guided by you in a way that will allow us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and have opportunities to share the others the good news about your son Jesus. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen.